Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, well, it's, it's a, a time for some Ether Raids replays for this week, and we still haven't gotten our last match of the season, aka the one that can drop our lift, potentially. So we'll see. We could end up 40 less than where we are right now, but don't care too much about that. I definitely notice people bring in those uh, hardy bearing airs nowadays, or like a dagger with hardy bearing. Not a terrible turn one play, although I wouldn't have put all your all three units in range like that. But not much you can do when the bolt trap has a three range, range of three, same difference. And they have double air, so. I guess single air technically, but double air. So they're just going to hit and turn like this, which, I mean, at first glance seems alright. But then you realize there's Sonya again. So, unfortunately, Sothus can't double. Feels bad, man. Bonus unit too strong. But they're up against Selif here, and... They need to be able to deal with Vantage, which is non-trivial, I would say, considering they're about to drop two of their units and barely not a third. So it's basically already over, but rip arenas. So they can drop self here and pick up the kill. And because of how they broke the structures, they're going to be able to essentially pick everyone off one by one if it weren't for the time limit and Sothis having her special at one cooldown. So, no, that's not going to work out for them. Maybe if they had enough turns they could have stalled Healing Tower. But this guy did not have um, Mystic Boost or whatever, so he was going to be taking the damage with his defense stat, which is not too great. Here we have another Bride Few Arm user who's definitely has enough HP to ploy Sylvia. <laughs> the thing is, like, mine is only plus five, zero dragon flowers. I could definitely just give her one more dragon flower for the extra HP. Probably should, but meh, nah, too lazy. <laughs> Not sure why they would ever put Bridefew on there, but okay. I mean, sure, I guess you could anti-dance the Seliph. Except you can't, because you don't have enough HP. So they're just going to do the hidden run, which is perfectly fine. And again, everyone runs as far away as they can possibly run. Which I don't particularly understand. Is that limits your options sure you're guaranteed to be safe that phase but not necessarily after that so again another pretty easy sell of cleanup but here we go again with the shenanigans they're gonna dance here and just run for their lives because there's no dancer now so they're pretty free to do that so pretty free win at this point. Get with a Gale Force range cav unit, pretty helpful for cleaning up here. But uh, and now they're going for the ether structures, so they just go ahead and stall here, which is perfectly fine. They have all the time in the world to do it, and again because they have the cav buddy, pretty easy cleanup there. So yeah, nothing too special there. That's just an example of hit and run working out. Of course, having the hardy bearing equivalent of a dazzling staff healer helps out against the cell of matchup if you don't have the damage output to straight up one round Caleb. And here we have someone with Keaton. So what could possibly go wrong? Also, this reset there was a voting gauntlet banner and I free summoned red and got a Seliph so I think 
He's at plus either plus nine or plus ten now capable now. Which is great. Not that I'll actually do it yet. <laughs> because I'm just hoarding my feathers for the end of February for the memes to hit either close to 999,999 or exactly that amount. I'm not sure yet. We probably can't get exactly there, but it doesn't matter too much. Another pretty simple hit and run here. Yeah, they're going to use Keaton to break that for some reason. Not entirely sure why you would ever do that, but okay. Now Self is kind of just on his own doing his thing. So, unfortunately Leaf does not have his special at two cooldowns or even lower. I don't know if he one shot Sonya. But assuming he doesn't, you know, it's not too full down, so he can't do a Gale Force play there. And here, Keaton should be able to pick up the two shot there and be able to clean up all right. And then you're just gonna run there, which is perfectly fine. Nakaya doing a bit, and Keaton barely actually killing there, which is would have been super awkward. If I actually had more merges on Sylvia, that would have probably been not a kill for Sylvia. I, if she actually killed him with Woldow plus Moonbill, I'd be surprised, but, I mean, kind of awkward there. They kind of just timed themselves out. Not I don't think that was ever necessary. Here we have another generic strategy, nothing too special here. Running guard, I'm presuming to deal with some generic hardy bearing units with like, like say Winter Cecilio with a hardy bearing dagger and bold fighter. That way she can't accelerate her special in one round. But I mean, mm. at least this person has three range units, so it's pretty easy cleanup of the structures they need to deal with. So now it's just free reign for them to hit and turn. And so they're gonna do this, which is, you know, perfectly okay. Although there is one problem, and uh, that would be, well, potato mode. But I mean, it's not gonna matter too much here. Although he isn't healing as much. Unfortunately, Sonya never actually gets a proper special. So he gets to just basically get a full heal there, but then they do this, which is uh, not a great play by them. Because this allows the Wings of Mercy snipe on Lucina, and so we get a free kill there. But at this point it's pretty easy cleanup for them. It's just pretty much going after the ether structures now. And Sylvia, no way in heck she's going to one round KO there. So pretty easy cleanup for them. Yeah, not, nothing too special here. But getting that kill is totally a win for us because we take what we can get <laughs> for the, these kind of matchups. Yeah, I have a lot of people with Legendary Leaf this week. Probably because it was water season. So Legendaries are and Leaf. For some reason I didn't see them on defense too much. I saw one Leaf on defense. Uh, I believe I calculated it and he couldn't two-shot Nino. But that that's pretty expected at this point. When Nino has 61 HP and up to 42 defense, you can... Take one or two hits, okay. Not against reds, but two hits against reds is definitely a stretch. It is possible, but it definitely helps to have like debuffs and such. Here, they can't proc their Gale Force, but they actually go in here, which is definitely a risky play. But I mean, not like it was going, not like what they did here was that great either now it's just going to be dirt fest 
But, uh... Unfortunately, Selkie's just gonna be really bulky in general, so... But they're gonna surrender because they probably didn't want to drop those units, but... Selkie this, this week is just pretty annoying for my team because we don't have enough res. And I think in a later matchup you'll see that come into play. Not sure why you would ever need a dual rally plus in ether raids, but I'm guessing that was on accident. I, I don't see why you would ever need a dual rally like that. Would it be to like creep chills or something? Maybe? Not sure. Yeah, we're just gonna get the dirt fest. Uh, we don't kill there, so Senya's just gonna blur per special and give him a full heal, basically, Kappa. Um, Brave Makaya getting okay, relatively close to a kill, but we just don't have enough space to get everyone to attack there. So he's going to pick up a kill there. And they're just gonna run. Which is totally fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. I believe that's Leafy. New Year's Leafy. <laughs> I'm just going I don't know how to pronounce her name anymore. I'm just I just gave up. <laughs> just gave up trying to figure out how. I'm just gonna stick with Leafy. It's close enough to anything reasonable. So this year trying to defend the Easter structure for me. But uh probably not going to work out. There's, there's everyone coming in all sorts of directions, so it should be a pretty easy sweep here. It looks like they don't go after the user structure, and they panic play themselves, but still not enough to not pick up the kills, so... Unfortunately for them, they aren't able to pick up those user structures, but I mean, they still got the win, so... It's worth something. A lot of times nowadays, on offense, I don't really stress out too much about getting the ether structures. Usually, if you execute pretty well, you just inherently can pick them up. Unless you have to take too many turns to set up, but... In general, it's like if I'm absolutely steamrolling a team because Nino has too much HP, Kappa. She can never really have too much HP, honestly, though. Simply because, well, there's some problems. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna get the classic case of, oh, hello, my name is Solof, and I'm going to get not one round KO'd, so now we can proc wings of mercy, yay! And that's our one kill. <laughs> that should be a pretty easy cleanup for them at this point. Like this. I mean, maybe Brave Makai could cause problems if Alphonse and or Dua Alphonse was debuffed, but it's not like we can dance for that anyways, and also have attack speed or attack res bond four up. So they're just gonna get an easy sweep here. It's just a matter about picking the ether, picking up the ether structures now. And they should be able to pick up the kill there, so they can pick up the structure like that. Uh, yeah, that works. <sighs> Just another week of usual shenanigans and still no defense match. I got a giant influx of matches one day. So presumably the matchmaker kind of lowered my priority for matchmaking. So if I do get matches, it's probably from rematches. Or I don't know why I would be showing my team again. It's kind of just the same old, same old. So here I'm just like, why would you ever bring Halloween Hector in this matchup? What, in what instance would this team need it, is my question. If you're trying to do hit and run with Alphonse, do Alphonse, but then why would you ever do that? 
I, I don't know. You're just taking so many turns doing basically nothing. I don't know. And I'm guessing they were trying to take out the healing tower there. And they couldn't do it. Definitely did. They could have engaged a long time ago. Yikes. And now they do use their duo skill here to get some cool chip damage, I guess. Sure, why not? And they finally initiate and they use their duo skill again. Okay. And they just run? The heck? Why would you just run? And then you would put Hector in range? What? What are you doing? I don't understand this at all. I mean, aside from the fact Sonya probably wouldn't have killed anyways if it was a heavily merged Halloween Hector or something. I don't see how that's ever a good idea. I guess there was the tactics room? Not sure why you, they did that. Probably wasn't paying attention. Maybe we had a special up or something. Okay, they go for this. And rip. Time themselves out. That seems to be the theme for this week, apparently. Alright, I think this is the Selkie that just shows how little res my team actually has. But I mean, that's kind of the deal when you have bonus stats. You can have 60 res <laughs> before debuffs. So that's something, I guess. There is chill res seal now. I, I don't think it's really worth putting it on my defense. Yeah, they're just gonna hit end turn here. There's not really much my team can do here. Because we can't, like, sure, if we had more units like Selif, then we'd be able to deal with that. But uh, here, Selif is going to, well, not be able to do much there. They actually do make that play, which is kind of interesting. And they take out Brave Makaya, so she doesn't attack Selkie and have effective damage and whatnot. But then there's Panic Ploy. So we're gonna pick up the kill on the Selkie there, but in general, like if you if I didn't have Selif, or you saw there how little damage she took from Sonya. It's pretty solid little bit of damage. Um Thanks to a new Fox Kit Fang. I'm guessing they surrendered because they wanted a better match. But, uh, yeah. Let's refresh. Yep. Nothing there. So, uh, yep. We'll see how things turn out, but we, as of the AR offense video, we've already dropped quite a few ranks. So, uh, maybe top 3k. Yeah, there's a pretty decent chance as, as long as we don't drop our lift. Even if we do drop 40 lift, I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, Allegiance battles probably out of top 1k. It's pretty typical nowadays. And Arena. I was thinking about trying to stay, but then I realized next week isn't water season, so we can't do that. <laughs> so then we basically waste crest for basically no profit, so not doing that. Nope. And Arena Salt, I still gotta redo the run probably. But anyways, we'll be back if there are more replays or if it's just the end of the shenanigans.
Okay, so there was one more replay. You probably saw that. And it looks like we barely made top 3k by a sliver. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much. But, uh, all right, panic manner bonus. That means we can just toss that. I mean, technically speaking, healing tower during Astra season is probably a good idea, but mine is level one and I use air anyways. So that almost doesn't matter. And since she's bonus, we might just bring, I don't know, Legendary Azura along. Although we probably just lose to Altina then. <laughs> probably still gotta bring like Sharina or someone to deal with. Altina's a little bit better. So there's that, I guess. Uh, Legion's Battles, let's see here. Barely top 1k. <laughs> yeah. Just, just grazing by nowadays. Arena, we dropped out because there's no point in trying to stay in when we're just gonna drop out the next week. So, we'll take that. And Arena Assault. Another screenshot for top 1k memes. And yep, pretty much just the usual shenanigans like every week. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Easter Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.